them for the word of God. I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create a new Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like an ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you know those earworms that you get in your head? That piece of a tune that just keeps repeating over and over and over. And it does not help if you go ahead and sing it loud. It's still stuck in your head. Well, when we were working on the musical for September 11th, Nolene had distributed CDs for us to listen to. That's a surefire way for me to get an earworm stuck in my head. And I had one of those earworms from the 9-11 musical in my head for at least a month afterward. I finally came screaming in the choir one night. I said, please, please find me a new earworm. And she did. She handed out CDs for the Christmas musical. <laughs> so now my earworm deals with, I feel like Superman in tights. <laughs> And if you don't think that a Christmas musical could have the phrase, I feel like Superman in tights, then you just show back up here in about five weeks on December the 11th, and we will prove you wrong about that. Now, I am not advocating that all earworms are a message from God. I'm not saying that. But it did occur to me that maybe I should go back and listen to that earworm that was playing in my head. So, I'm sorry, choir members. I'm about to put it in your head now. But the earworm that I was stuck with from 9-11 was a phrase used in one of the songs when we were talking about people who serve in the armed forces. And it says, we are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. We are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. And I thought, actually, that's a very appropriate earworm for a church to hear. We are living the sacrifice. We are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. Now, you are living a legacy of a whole lot of sacrifices. And this morning, we're going to name some of them. So, if you're on the end of one of the pews, I want you to either come on the inside here and find there's going to be a name. There'll be a little plaque. Somebody gave it in memory or in honor of somebody. If you're on the outside, then maybe you want to find a window. Now, if you're on the inside of the pew, what you need to do is crack open your hymnal. That's that large blue book that has music in it in front of you. Or the Bible, which is the smaller one with print in it. And on the inside front cover, there is a uh, face plate. Because somebody gave that in honor and memory of somebody. And I want you to name them. Just normal conversation voice. You don't have to make me hear it. But I want you to name saints right now. Go ahead. Let's hear about the saints. Uh, 
Laura Vaught. Now you see, the Bible says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In this particular church building, you can read the names of some of the cloud of witnesses. In one of my churches, we still used the hymnals and didn't have screen, and so there were families who had gathered the hymnals of the people that they were in memory of who were in their family. And every Sunday when they opened the hymnal, they understood themselves to be singing praise to God with the family member who had died. It was called, it is called, the communion of saints. And it's an understanding that the church is not bound simply by yours and my lifetimes. The church is not bound by human lifetimes. And so some of the names of the people you've read, they've moved, or they found a new church home. But a lot of the names of people you read have died. But that does not mean that their sacrifice has gone in vain. Because you and I are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. Some of them made a sacrifice of money in order to make sure there was a pew or a hymnal or a window. Somebody made a sacrifice to make sure that we had a baptismal font in here. But all of those people that we named, no matter how faithful or how lackadaisical they were about their faith, <laughs> at some point they prayed for this church. <coughs> at some point, maybe it was just Christmas and Easter, but maybe it was more often, they came to worship. At some point, they had to have given some money to make a sacrifice. At some point, they served. And maybe they served in the children's Sunday school and taught the stories of Jesus. And those people that they taught have now grown up. And you are the legacy of those who have taught before you. You know those stories of Jesus because somebody made a sacrifice on Sunday mornings. They thought it was so important that you know the stories of Jesus, that they were here on Sunday mornings and they would have something ready to teach you. You are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. In the New Testament, when the word saints gets used, and it's most often used by Paul, we are not talking about the Roman Catholic Church's definition of saint. The Roman Catholic Church has a very clear definition of saint. Saints are super holy people, they've gone through a whole vetting process, and then they're canonized by the Pope, and then they're saints. But that's not how Paul uses the word saints when he's talking about the saints. He is talking about the everyday, ordinary followers of Jesus Christ. In other words, he's talking about us. So week after week, when you and I say the creed, we talk about we believe in the communion of saints. And that means that we get together, that we are connected together, that we are joined, whether we're here or whether we're somewhere else, and we're joined with every other congregation that is worship, worshiping Jesus today. And we are joined not only through space, but also through time. We are worshiping with all those saints who have gone before us, some of whom you've named this morning. And we are worshiping with all those saints who are yet to come. Because those saints who are yet to come will be our legacy from the sacrifice we make. Somebody sacrificed so that you can sit in a, well, mildly comfortable pew. So that you have a building and we have windows that will inspire us. Somebody has sacrificed and they may no longer be here to enjoy the pew and the windows and the building. But you and I are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. And the calling is not that you and I get to take back. Sure, 
It's nice to be in this building. It's inspiring. It's more or less comfortable. But the reality is you and I are not to kick back and get comfortable. That is not why they sacrificed. Their legacy is not for you and I to sit here and do nothing. Their legacy, the reason they sacrificed, is so that you and I will continue their work, so that you and I will find where we need to make a sacrifice, so that you and I leave a legacy. That's what the communion of saints is. We are joined together with those who have died, and in a little while we're going to be naming specifically those members of this church who have died this past year. And then we will see pictures, not only of our members, but from some of the family of our members. And we remember that we are joined together because the communion of saints extends beyond our ability to keep time. And you will walk past pews and you will handle Bibles and hymnals and you'll look at windows and you'll see the names there. And those names are the names of the saints. And you and I are surrounded. You and I are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. And the call is not to sit back and be comfortable. The call is not to say, oh, all done. The call is to find where we are to sacrifice. So that the communion of saints that extends into the generation that comes next and the generation beyond that can live our legacy. We are living the legacy of the sacrifice they made. And how are we called to sacrifice? to make the legacy for the saints to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.